going to give the information and they're going to get you. So there's something to just watching that, that's okay. <coughs> Is it going to stop the issue? <coughs> that's what I'm saying. Until we decide, you know, we ain't going to fight whether it's jumping on somebody or whether it's shooting on somebody over this crazy stuff. For what? You know, I mean, and I, my belief is always if I if I got a future and I'm on my way somewhere, I want to do something with my life. Okay, I'm not going to get I'm not going to get something get connected with something that's going to detour me from my future. You know, if I know I'm, well, I'm not getting caught up with some nonsense stuff, arguing with you like, you know, first of all, it, it, what's your name? Army. Tisha. 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 Okay. If we get into an argument. Risking a fight or a shooting or a jump out where I could get arrested. You know what? You call me whatever you want to call me. I don't care because I'm on my way to be a lawyer. So I'm not going to get caught up in some foolishness with you that might deter me or abort my, my plan. I'm on my way somewhere. If I'm on my way somewhere, I'm not going to let somebody pull me aside from some nonsense. You know? I don't, I'm amazed at how we allow people to get up under our skin, you know? So, you call me this, or you call me that, or you call me the B name, what? Okay, <laughs> fine. One of the things I started out talking about with Dr. Kenyon Marquette Power, they called him every kind of name in the book. He didn't respond, because he knew who he was. If I know who I am, I don't care what you call me. You don't define me. You don't name me, I know who I am, that's your problem. Don't bring your problem to me. <laughs> so, I, 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 the watch thing is a certain amount of deterrent. At the end of the day, no. But I go, I go back to my 1,200 jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to make some money. Anybody else? I guess we just got a few minutes left. Anybody? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said something I've, I've never forgotten the last time you were here talking to my kids, and you said that uh, no amount of money, no number of police are ever going to solve our, the, the crime problem and the violence problems that our communities face until we solve them ourselves. Uh, and I, I remember you saying, you know, you, you said this, the, that the no snitch thing was, I think you said cowardice. Yeah, I believe the no snitch thing is pure cowards. You know, and I, let me take go back to the real personal thing. I like the tail. <laughs> <laughs> I have a sw I actually have a T-shirt that says I'm, I'll snitch. Real clear. You do some shit around me, I'm gonna snitch. I'll be very clear about it because we gonna stop this stuff. <laughs> you know, one way or the other. Now you can call me a snitch, you can be mad at me, you can threaten me, whatever. I'm gonna tell you everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> I swear you sound like you walk on the same <laughs> Yeah, but because I believe that. Because first of all, I have a problem. That's T T Shay? T Shay. T Shay. <coughs> oh, excuse me, T Shay with a K. <laughs> if somebody shoots T Shay, say you shoot T Shay. We'll start some stuff right up in here. <laughs> you should keep saying, I know you did it. And nobody's saying nothing. You gotta go. I'm free. For real, because in fact, I'm gonna let you go back home, sit up, eat McDonald's, watching TV after what you did? No way. My son was killed. To this day, nobody has been caught. And that was 1998. It happened by somebody in that neighborhood. So guess what? I have no idea who did. I probably helped that person. He probably come in my gym. I probably gave that person McDonald's cards. I probably might have helped him get a job. Because I didn't know who it was that killed my son. When we had uh, some, a few years ago, somebody shot two people over a beef that had taken place. Uh, in the neighborhood, and it's right in front of our gym building on 78th and Racine. The day that it happened, it was around 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the afternoon, and all the press came out there because it was St. Tobias, and Father Floyd was St. Tobias, and all this had happened right in front of his gym. I said, I'm putting a $5,000 reward up today. Come tell me who did this. Before midnight, 
of that night, I had six people come give me the name of the person, their address, and their cell phone number. <laughs> now here's the better part of it. Every one of them were members of a gang. He said, Father Mike, I ain't got, I don't want no reward, I want no money. Because when they disrespected the Saint Sabina, they disrespected us. And all I'm telling you, and I want to say the guy's name, you better catch him before I do, because he's going to be shot. That's how crazy it got. So I said, we're going to find him. We had him arrested within 24 hours. Had him convicted. And went to jail. Now, here was my point when I talked to all the brothers in the street. You did this because it was St. Sabina. You all came forward. St. Sabina is no more important than Ada, Carpenter, uh, uh, 83rd Street, 78th Street. We got to be this way about everything because guess what? If they know, they always say, well, if you snitch, guess what? If she snitches, then her life is in danger. I understand that, but here's the difference. And everything that happens, there's usually about 10 to 15 people that know. If 10 to 15 people tell the information, there's nobody to single out. So I always say the one that would put her life in danger is the, is the 14 people that didn't talk, not the gang member. Because if everybody comes up, everybody says, oh no, we know, we know Quiche with the K did it. <laughs> if we all know that and we all talk, then guess what? She can't, who's she going to pin out? Because everybody in the room said, uh-huh, it was her. But that's how we have to become as a community. We have to set a standard saying, you know what? In Englewood, Auburn Gresham, Marquette Park, wherever, you cannot shoot a kid here and think you're going back home and now somebody's not going to tell and once the community, going back to what you put in, once the community determines that, I don't need the police. I don't need them. Because the community say, you know what? You do this in this community, you're an enemy of our community. You're not welcome here. You can't come back in Marquette Park. You can't come back in Auburn Gresham. We had actually two people in Auburn Gresham who we knew were shooters that were constantly, and we told them, you come in here, well, I told them you're going to be arrested. Others told them they were going to do other things to them. <laughs> and they left. Without a police saying a word to them. So I think it's got to be, it's got to be a community ownership. Mm -hmm. This is my house. This is my block. This is my neighborhood. I'm not going to live in terror. I'm not going to live wondering if my little brother He's going to get killed just coming home from school or sitting on a porch or playing in the park. I'm not going to live in that kind of a mentality. Can we use the last minute to get a, a class photo?